Feathers are light, complex epidermal structures with a wide range of colours, shapes and sizes. The evolution of feathers occurred in a series of transitional stages, a story which takes us back all the way to the dinosaur era. Dinosaurs are commonly divided into two major lineages. The first lineage is the Sprisciens, also known as lizard-type dinosaurs. The second lineage is the Ornithischians, also known as bird-type dinosaurs, including heavy species such as Triceraptors and Herdlevine herbivores like Hadrosaurus. We will explore the Sariscians lineage, which includes sauropods and predatory theropods such as Tyrannosaurus and Velociraptor. Recent fossil findings suggest that feathers of one form or another were widespread amongst Sariscian families. The first dinosaur fossil found to display evidence of feathers was the Cynoceropteryx, a fast-running theropod which lived approximately 130 million years ago. Since the discovery of Cynoceropteryx, many other fossils have been found which also show evidence of feathers. Not only is the feathered dinosaur group constantly growing, it is also beginning to incorporate many dinosaurs previously believed to have been non-feathered, such as Tyrannosaurus. The evolution of the feather is said to have occurred through a series of transitional stages, with each stage reflecting a new structural feature. We're examining the evolution of the feather, referring to Prum's model. Richard Prum devised a five-step model for this evolutionary process. First feathers developed from the tubular elongation of a placode to form a hollow, unbranched cylindrical tube. Stage 1 feathers that look like fuzzy fibers have been found on Dylon Paradoxus, a member of the Tyrannosaurus genus. It has been suggested that these feathers serve for thermoregulation. Similar feathers are still seen today in modern birds, such as penguins. Another dinosaur found with stage 1 feathers is the Bipyors inexpectus. Its primitive feathers were quite stiff, longer than average, and only occurred on certain parts of the body. These could not have served for insulation as they were spaced too far apart. Instead, they were likely used for display and communication. At the second stage of feather evolution, we see the generation of bar bridges to form barbs, which emanate and split from the lower part of the feather shaft. These feathers have been found on John Sangosaurus Ixiensis. It had stage 1 feathers on its body, and stage two feathers on its tail and forelimbs. These were likely used for display and intraspecies communication. Stage three feathers had two forms. One involved the fusion of barbs to form a rachis with still distinguishable barbs, and the other involved the development of barbules from pre-existing barb ridges. Both these types can be seen on Epidepsicteryx hue. Its body was covered with barbules, and its tail feathers were composed of ribbon-like wheel of incompletely fused barbs. Another species with stage 3 feathers is Chitipati osmuski, which has been found in a brooding position suggesting bird-like behavior. By the early Cretaceous, we begin to see the appearance of stage 4 panaceous feathers in many families of theropods. The panaceous feather is differentiated by its proximal and distal barbules, which are linked by hooklets to form the closed panaceous vein. Many theropod fossils have been found with this type of feather. One example being Sinonitosaurus milleni, an agile predator and a relative of Velociraptor. It has been suggested that these feathers were used to glide between trees, but were not capable of active powered flight. Another example is Anchiornis huxley, a creature resembling a woodpecker. Recent studies analyzing melanosomes, the color producing organelles, found that Anchiornis had black and white feathers. Stage 5 feathers involve the lateral displacement of the barbs via the addition of new barb ridges to each side of the feather follicle. This led to the development of a closed panaceous feather with an asymmetrical vein. This feather type would have resembled modern feathers that we see today. Although the panaceous feather is an important feature for flight in dinosaurs, powered flight also requires several other morphological changes. The forelimbs adapted to withstand substantial stress and are specialized to manipulate certain wing feathers to provide increased aerial mobility. The shoulder joint and associated muscles evolved to allow for the recovery stroke. The hip evolved to provide extra support and stability. The hind limbs adjusted to account for changes to the body's centre of gravity and also to facilitate flight takeoff. The tail shortened, effectively reducing weight. The sternum developed a large distinctive keel for anchoring the flight muscles. The wishbone became springier, allowing the return of more energy to the wings with each stroke. Certain bones held to reduce and redistribute weight as well to accommodate the development of additional air sacs that allowed increased respiratory capability. These adaptations, together with higher metabolic rates, allowed the panaceous feather to be used for powered flight. 
Some of these changes, along with stage 5 feathers, are displayed by Archaeotarips lithographica. Many paleontologists believed Archaeotarips to represent the link between avian dinosaurs, also known as birds, and non-avian dinosaurs. However, a recent fossil find of Awarnes Zoo was found to be more bird-like. Now it is considered to be the earliest known bird. Today, birds are extremely diverse and occupy a wide range of habitats worldwide. Birds and non-avian dinosaurs coexisted from the late Jurassic up until the end of the Cretaceous. By the mid-Cretaceous, both non-avian dinosaurs and birds were highly diverse, with a wide range of feathers of all stages seen. This all changed after the KT mass extinction 65 million years ago, which is believed to have been caused by a combination of a meteorite impact into the modern-day Gulf of Mexico and widespread volcanism associated with modern-day India's Deccan Traps. These events led to intense environmental changes, resulting in a selective mass extinction of all non-avian dinosaurs. This played a major role in the evolution of birds. By 10 million years after the extinction, the remaining birds had rapidly diversified into the environmental niches left behind by the non-avian dinosaurs. The 9,000 species of birds still alive today all have direct lineage to those that evolved during this explosive radiation. The evolution of feathers took place in five stages, with each feather form fulfilling very different functions. The asymmetric panaceous feather facilitated the evolution of flight, along with several morphological changes. Birds that evolved from small predatory dinosaurs are the only dinosaurs that survived the KT extinction. So the next time you see a flock of birds, just remember that dinosaurs are still walking and flying among us. Oh, well, everybody's heard about the bird. The bird, bird, bird. The bird's a winner. Well, the 